Hello and welcome to Ginny's Gin Livestream. I'm Ginny and my husband's going to be, my husband Rob is going to be joining us later. And um, we founded Ginny's Gin a few years ago with our great friends Amy and Jeff Close. And I thought I would take, um, both of our cocktails are fairly simple today, so I thought I might take a little time just to um, explain how Ginny's Gin came into being for those of you that don't know. So, a few years ago, I was sitting on the soccer sidelines watching um, our youngest son play soccer. And I was telling the crowd that I was looking for a job, anybody that would listen. And um, so my husband had been making noises about quitting his job of 30 years in the wine industry. And so it was like, okay, time to regroup and you know think of something else. So this one girlfriend said, Ginny, you're British and you've been drinking gin for decades you need to meet these winemaker friends of mine who have been distilling gin in Sonoma County and they're distilling it from grapes um, as well as grain. So um, we made, we had the meeting and uh, we got together and after breakfast and then lunch and, and you know, numerous meetings, they hired me as their brand ambassador. So my job basically was to go in and out of accounts in Napa and Sonoma counties. Um, and after a while, the bartenders, you know, I'd come in and they were like, oh, well, you're Ginny with a gin, and they would remember my name. So things went really well, and I really enjoyed what I was doing. But after about nine months, I got the fateful phone call uh, between Christmas and New Year. We were actually up in Tahoe, and one of the winemakers, um, these guys, by the way, had spent seven years perfecting the recipe. Um, they, it was all about balance, mouthfeel, and restraint because as winemakers you know they want the grapes to, to speak obviously um, and the same with the gin although it's complex and has 10 different botanicals it was um, it was about everything playing nicely together so I think as a, as a gin it's very approachable because of that seamless seamless Rob just said so anyway so here I am the random master um, the phone call went um, Ginny you're doing such a great job thank you but um, we can't afford to really keep doing this. We can't keep on with the venture. But um, if you can find somebody to buy the company, we'll give you 5% commission. So I was like, okay. So I went to bed that night um, and you know, super disappointed. It was nice to have the paycheck, obviously, but I think more importantly, I didn't want to give up on the gin. Um, it had been so well received wherever I went that I knew that this was, you know, this was a we great gin. What's that? And we liked it. And we liked it, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, you know, we started, you know, the, the wheel started turning and, um, you know, I put a few spreadsheets together and we started talking with our friends, Jeff and Amy, some spirited conversations and, uh, you know, somewhat intoxicated conversations too, I'm sure. But um, after a while, it sort of became clear that, you know, we should may maybe be serious about this. So I go to um, our two teenage sons and I say, um, help me put together a PowerPoint presentation. So they teach me enough to be dangerous and walk away, typical teenagers. Um, so I remember presenting at brunch and um, you know, I allayed fears and I you know, rebuffed all the negatives and everything. Um, but I, you know, I think I put a fairly good presentation together. So Jeff and Amy say, let's do it, we're in. And we look at Rob. And he's like, hell no, we're not getting in the booze business. <laughs> so that was that. So <laughs> maybe he was right, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, so I go to bed that night very disappointed and, um, you know, thinking, God, I really, you know, I just don't want to give up on this. So a few days later, I was having coffee in Santa Rosa with a girlfriend and telling her the story. And uh, she's like, well, Jenny, show me the presentation. Um, and I happened to have it on my laptop, no big deal. So I just showed her the presentation, no pitch. It was really just um, inf informative, if you like. She said there and then in the coffee shop, she's like, I'll lend you your portion of the investment. So that's how we got to be in business. So, um, you know, it, it, it took some time, obviously. Um, we rebranded, um, we took uh, the gin and we put it in a wine bottle. And that was obviously to honor the vineyard provenance the winemaker recipe. As I said, you know, these five winemakers, they spent seven years perfecting the recipe. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to let it go. So in the wine bottle, um, 
my name, Ginny, obviously, you know, I've been drinking gin the longest, so that's why they let me put my name on the bottle, um, but it kind of works too. Um, some people are like, is your name really Ginny? You know, so not everybody believes that my name actually is Ginny, but it is. Um, on the back label, I don't know if, um, you know, a lot of you probably already know this, but there's a name cloud. Um, the name cloud is for all the friends and family members that help make it happen. My two sisters, three, well, wow, three sisters, um, put three sisters on there because they're actually the ones that named me. So when um, I was born, I was a little bit of a mistake and my sisters were all flying the nest. They were sort of late teens and what have you. Um, so my mother, you know, at a loss for another girl name, um, she gave them a job of naming me. The winning name was Virginia, but nobody's ever called me Virginia. It's unless I'm in trouble. Um, they've always called me Ginny. So hence, Ginny's Gin. So there you go. So now you have the backstory for those of you that didn't know the full story. Um, so what I'm going to make today is a Tom Collins. It's a blackberry and sage Tom Collins. Uh, by the way, Rob is fully on board now, obviously, as you can see, and he's our cocktail uh, guru. Um, so we were hiking the other day and I noticed that the blackberries were now in season. They're all getting beautifully ripe. Um, I did pick some blackberries on the hike, but I ate them all, so I had to go to the store for these. Um, but if you can get wild blackberries for this, that's very cool. Um, and then with the sage is all out of the garden as well. So very simple. Um, what we're going to do is take four sage it's a really leaves. Savory cocktail. The sage really yeah. lights up there. Blackberries yeah. and sage go together. One, two, three, four sage. Yeah. And then we're going to take six blackberries. Two, four, six. And we're going to put a little simple syrup. So we're going to do um, half an ounce of simple syrup. In there and we're just so we're going to add a little obviously to this and we're going to muddle it this is a muddler if you don't have a muddler at home you can just use the back of a spoon or what have you wooden spoon right um, so I'm going to muddle this um, to release the obviously the juices from the blackberries and then the essential oils from the the sage and it's such a great color too it smells delicious I think that's enough there we go there we go and then we're going to put in one ounce of lemon juice. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hiking has been kind of fabulous recently. I must say, it's helping with the sanity. Gotta say. Hope you guys are all staying sane. And of course, the cocktails help too, yes. Um, do you mind getting me a, a strainer? Because I've got some pips in there, honey, please. Oh, I've got one. I had mine have one, sorry. Okay, so here's the lemon. One ounce. There we go. Cool. That's that. And fits. Voila. And two ounces of the main attraction, gin. This is of gin is gin. Okay. And then I'm just going to add some ice cubes and stir it up so it gets nice and cold. And then I'm going to strain it into my cocktail glass. Um, you know, it is a Tom's Collins, so you can put it in a Collins glass, which is the tall one. But I really love this glass right here, so I'm just going to use that today. Um, ice, okay. If you have a hard time, you know, with the, the blackberry bunging up the sieve, which we might find, we'll see. And I just love this color. Oh my god, look at that color. Okay, hold on that. And we're going to put some nice ice cubes in here. Talk among yourselves. training here.
what better way to use blackberries, right? I mean, I love blackberry tart too. Blackberry and apple pie, that's a good one. Okay, there we go. Just need a quick bit of a sieve here. And then, put this to the side. And we're just gonna top it off with a little club soda and garnish with a sage leaf. Club soda. Salsa, club soda, rubina, whatever. There you go. <laughs> you need a little more than that. Give a little stir. Okay. And I think it's just really simple. I think I'm just gonna put a sage leaf on the top like that. Et voila. Blackberry and sage, Tom Collins. Um, cheers, everybody. So Rob now is going to do a corpse reviver number two, and he's going to tell you why it's called a corpse reviver, right? <laughs> cheers. Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay, so Corpse Survivor 2. So the Corpse Survivor 1 was a pre, pre prohibition um, cocktail that um, was known as a hangover cure. So people would kind of, you know, after a really big night, drag themselves into the bar the next morning. And uh, a Corpse Survivor is basically 30% alcohol. So it's about as strong as a, it's about the same as a martini. Mm -hmm. And um, so they used to use brandy. Now the Corpse Survivor 2 is a gin version. And so it's a pretty simple drink, really easy to make. It has equal parts of gin, Lillet Blanc, lemon juice, and orange liqueur. And I like Grammonier, but Cointreau is kind of like one of the ones that you, people usually recommend. So it's, it's an ounce of lemon juice, ounce of gin, ounce of Lillet, and an ounce Lillet. of Grammonier. And so Lillet, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, super easy, super um, balanced and tasty, and, and a little bit strong, which is great. So, I'm going to just take my lemon and drop it in half, and I'm going to come up with my ounce of lemon juice this way, right into the, yep, those are pretty juicy little lemons actually. So there you go, there's, there's the ounce of lemon juice. Ounce of gin, ounce of lele, lele blanc, and ounce of grand marnier. Ooh, very nicely said. And there you go. There, 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 everything is in the pool. Don't need the simple syrup. And then um, some people will take their glass, which mine's in the freezer. Uh -huh. And they will put a little absinthe and do an absinthe rinse and then dump it out and then put the four portions. I like to do, um, I, I put some absinthe in a dasher bottle. So I kind of like one dash. So the dash is in. And then now all we have to do is give it a, give it a good shake. Shake it shake The shaker tin and a nice chilled glass. And then no garnish. I mean, some people do call for orange peel. Um, I don't think it needs a garnish. I think it's beautiful the way it is. Mm -hmm. Super chill. It's got some little tiny shards of glass in there, or glass, ice. <laughs> Hopefully not. Just ice. Uh, and that's the Corpse Survivor 2. Okay. It's the most delicious of all the Corpse Survivors. Yep, cheers. So. All right, so we're gonna have a little cheers here. Um, enjoy your weekend, guys. Thank you for watching on a Friday as opposed to a Saturday. We figured it would be kind of nice for us to just have our a weekend. Um, yeah, we didn't want to wait till Saturday to have a drink. <laughs> so we'll stop just before. <laughs> Cheers. Alright guys. Cheers and uh, happy weekend. Cheers honey. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Mm, that's the best one I made all week.
I practiced for a few days to make sure I had it down right. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's it. Cheers. Okay.